Hey out there, this is just a quick tutorial on how to assemble the Farview Pagoda antenna. Uh, it's very straightforward to do, very simple. You open these up, you have your top plate, your middle plate, and your bottom plate. Your RPSMA or RPA connector, piece of heat shrink, and your coax. First, start with the coax. Cut it down on each end by about three millimeters. You want to try and get it as straight as possible. Um, on a surface, flat surface, just roll it. And there you go, nice and flat. Take a razor knife and carefully, without cutting your thumb off, do that. You'll feel it go through. Not real difficult to do, it takes a little bit of patience. There we go. About three mils good. Again, be very careful. I have sliced my thumb up pretty good doing this. Okay, perfect. You'll also get a jig. Don't even try to build this without the jig. It's a pain in the butt. So, first off, jig comes in five pieces. A top and a bottom plate, which are identical. And what you want to do, easiest way I think, so the best way to assemble this, flat side up, and put in two sides make sure they're even and that's the biggest thing this is the, using this jig actually the other side works better using this jig is what makes it stay in tune that's the one thing about pagoda antennas if you don't get them at the right height the frequency changes and they won't work for shit so put two sides on your jig take your top plate flip it upside down put it in the very top Take your third piece of jig, kind of hard to do, there we go, and then take your top plate, and hopefully if the gods are with us, there you go. Simple, simple. Now. Take your coax, you have three millimeters, give or take, stripped off of each end, and slide it in like that, okay? Now, the trick to soldering these is, there's no trick at all, really. Put your soldering iron on really hot, heat up the coax first, and then bring the solder to it and let it flow. It's very simple to do, um, but you want that flush all the way like that, okay? This probably will, won't pick up on camera, but I'll go ahead and do this real quick. See if we can do it sideways here. There we go. Now, as you can see, that's a nice wet joint. Now it's going to be hot, obviously. So now the trick, take your frame back apart, your jig. Whew. Leave two of them on there. Now this part's a trick. That is right side up. That is upside down. Now, you want to put these on like this. So they are opposites. Okay? It's a little tricky to get set up in the jig. I'm going to try to do this on camera. We'll see how this goes. But what I usually do is hold them with your fingers like that. 
See what I mean? Then simply, supposedly, it's tricky. There we go. Now the other tricky part is getting this one in. And since I'm recording this, it's going to be a pain in the ass. There we go. Perfect. Be patient. Not the easiest thing to do. Let's slide this back over. There we go. Nice, neat. Make sure she's tight, and basically do the same thing. You're gonna solder here, and here, and here. Okay. Let me do that real quick. Beautiful. Okay. Now, you can see it's a nice, even, I don't have a ton caked in there. You don't need a ton. And one last ditch effort here. What you want to do is pop this apart. She's going to be hot, so watch it. You want to put some solder on this top plate here, right where your coax is coming through. Okay. One second. All right. Now, since that's a little hot, I'm holding it with pliers. Then you want to cut this off. Some people say leave a nub. I don't leave a nub. Um, it's fine the way it is. It's no big deal there. Now what you want to do, the hard part's over. That is the hard part. Make sure this end, is, this bit here is straight. And you want to slide on your connector. Okay. It's a little long. I'm going to cut it. Beauty. Now if you look really close, you'll see a tiny little hole, which you probably can't see on the camera. You want to drop some solder in there, and she'll seat up real nice. So to do that, use a little bit of help with hands here. Don't use much. Let it sit. Get off as much excess as you can. And you can also trim it or sand it if you need to. This was kind of sloppy, but that's okay. Then slide on your heat shrink tubing. Don't forget that bit. I usually put um, an extra piece on there, something like this, just to make it. A little bit more robust. So what we'll do, slide this on for good measure. Let's go about here. Slide that over the top. Slide that over the top of that. Slide this over here. And voila! You've got it. We can actually make this piece shorter. Because 
doesn't really matter. The black one will cover it. Then again, use a helping hand to uh, solder this in. So, hopefully we can see this. Downward angle, just like you're welding. Heats up very easily. Preheat it. deal. The trick is always preheat and it'll flow right around. Beauty. It's not how much solder you get on, it's where you get it. Okay. So then, you can slide this down. A little bit of a breeze in here today, so it's kind of oops. Remember, never get your heat shrink in the flame or it leaves a black spot. Cool. Now, this part's important. This is uh, one of the big complaints about these is people always put the caps on there because if these two plates bend, you lose your frequency. Okay? Here's a trick that I do take a rubber glove just because silicone's a pain in the ass to get off silicone RTV or clear silicone white silicone black silicone whatever the heck you want so I'm gonna push out my gouge here there it is Then what I do is I fill this a little bit. With silicone. Looks like crap, right? Then take your rubber glove, smear it around a little bit. Make it look neat doesn't have that much weight but what that does let it sit overnight now well, at least that's what my silicone takes let it sit overnight and it will solidify inside there as rubber obviously and it will keep you from going out of balance or out of tune when you crash now this bit will still bend I suppose if you want to put extra weight in there you could put some silicone in there too but that's a big chunk um, but that one's pretty easy and visually easy to bend back, whereas the two plates, if they touch, eh, it's, you know, it really screws everything up. I've made about 20 of these, like, just like this, identical. Never had a problem. Uh, the silicone doesn't interfere or anything like that with your reception, and it's just, abs you don't have to put the plastic cap on there. It weighs less than that, obviously. And the silicone in the inside is, is hollow, obviously. I didn't goo it totally in there. Um... And that will keep you from going out of tune when you crash. So hopefully this is a good little video for anybody that wants to make these. If you're going to order your own chips, chip set, or uh, board set, if you will, online, I know you can do that, definitely buy one of these jigs from Farview. If nothing else, I'll put a link to the description of where I got the actual antenna. And they just sent me the jig for free. I've got about 10 of these things. Um, don't try to build one without it. Uh, it's just an absolute nightmare. You saw how hard it was just to get the darn thing in the fixture alone. Can you imagine trying to hold those still while you're soldering it? Don't even try it. Um, unless you've got a magic lamp to rub, it's going to be very difficult to do. Anyway, hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, keep the shiny side up. Take care.